Hey guys, what's going on? Blaine back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about Call Me Chihiro. Call Me Chihiro is a Japanese drama that tells the story of Chihiro, a bento lunch shop worker who lives in a small town away from the hustle and bustle of traditional city life. She becomes notable in the community due to her past life, and that she used to be a sex worker. Despite the stigma associated with this though, Chihiro does not regret her past, instead having moved on from it to pursue a new life where she works now. Chihiro slowly wins over the love and respect of the local population, as they become more aware of themselves as people and the relationships they have with each other, and ultimately what their place is in the world. This is without a doubt the best Japanese film Netflix has released since we couldn't become adults, and anyone who has seen my review of that movie knows that that's not an easy feat to accomplish. I was constantly spellbound with how simultaneously heartwarming and heartbreaking it was, and how much it emphasized character development to convey its themes. It's one of those rare films that sticks with you for a while after you finish watching it. It does have a few issues with its presentation here and there, but when one considers the film as a whole, they end up being negligible, as its intricate subplots, detailed themes of existentialism and family, and uplifting tone make it one of the most inspiring movies I've seen in recent years. The main character, Chihiro, is the heart and soul behind everything that makes this movie so great. Her status as an outcast is quickly evident, based on her eccentricities from walking on ledges instead of sidewalks, to her tendency to befriend just about everyone she meets. Right away, this told me that she was different from everyone else, and it made me intrigued to find out more about her. It didn't take long after that for me to fall in love with her character. Her jovial nature and kindness toward others made it impossible for me to dislike her, yet her actions also carried this aura of sadness as if she was hiding or running away from something, which becomes more evident over the course of the story. A part of this pertains to her past life as a sex worker, and I have to say I was very impressed with how the filmmakers address this facet of her character. It doesn't overemphasize her sexuality to any degree, instead just treating it like it was any other job she had to do to make a living, and only drip feeding details of it here and there to avoid taking over the rest of the story. This helped me connect to and sympathize with Chihiro better as a result, and this is especially so after parts of her family background are revealed as well. Once again, though tragic, the movie doesn't linger too much on this area, giving just enough information to help the audience understand where she came from without deviating away from where she is now. Throughout the movie, one can get a sense that Chihiro has a hard time moving on from her past. Even after switching jobs and moving to a new place, she still carries a pit of sadness and loneliness brought about by what happened in her past life, and this plays out in the way she interacts with others to brilliant effect. Instead of featuring a few supporting characters, the movie uses a bunch of them, and it was amazing to see the movie juggle so many of them with such little effort. All of them have their own role to play in the story, and affect and build Chihiro in various ways. The common thread running between many of them is that they all live in a world where no one understands them. They feel ignored, looked down upon, and generally unable to fulfill their wishes. So when someone like Chihiro comes along and treats them differently with kindness and respect, they don't know how to respond to it. I couldn't help but recognize how lonely and lost every other character was in the movie. It really struck a chord with me and reminded me of how I dealt with bouts of loneliness myself in the past, how I coped with it, and tried to find someone who could understand what I was going through. It goes to show that one special person really can make a significant difference in one's life, and I love seeing Chihiro building up these characters after them having been broken down. In the same vein, it also shows how complex and unconventional families and relationships can be. Every character in the movie deals with their own sort of baggage, and it was amazing to see all of them start to bond not just with Chihiro, but also with each other over time. Chihiro creates this sort of ripple effect where people she has an impact on start to pass kindness onto others too, and this effectively forms a sense of community throughout the movie, which highlights the importance of people coming together to help each other. One could even look at all these characters as being a family of their own, with Chihiro sort of being a mother figure to them. But as characters start to reach their own self-actualization, Chihiro's journey isn't quite as simple. She still has to deal with figures resurfacing from her past, managing the stigma of her previous job, and dealing with emotional gut punches whenever something happens to her or one of her new friends, and it was amazing to see how Chihiro dealt with it all. It drives the point home that no one can ever truly run away from their past. Every experience that someone ever experiences plays a part in shaping them, no matter how big or small. And this is exemplified in a small handful of flashback scenes that further add depth to Chihiro as a character. But even though Chihiro has trouble leaving her past behind, she's still able to live life on her own terms without worrying much about how others think. It shows how empowering freedom can be once people take advantage of it, even when they have to contend with naysayers along the way. And Chihiro remains an inspiring example of this fact. 
Another excellent example was with Okaji, a high school student who feels alienated by her family and current friend group. Her subplot happened to be my favorite, because it reinforces Chihiro's values while providing a more optimistic perspective on them. She desires to change her life and connect better with people who are different from what she's used to, which is why she's so drawn to Chihiro in the first place, going so far as to take pictures of her from a distance. It was great how her story added to the movie's themes, by having her share her newfound enjoyment for life while showing the growing pain she has to endure as well. Okaji isn't the only notable character in the movie though. Chihiro helps and interacts with a variety of characters, such as a homeless man, an elementary school student, and a sick woman in a hospital. She even helps out animals, and all of these people and things she interacts with contribute to the movie by showing just how valuable life truly is in all forms. There are a few issues that can come about with all these characters, but they're more so nitpicks than anything else. Some of these characters and their subplots are developed more than others, and that's not to say that some of them are bad, it's just that some subplots don't always feel engaging or even all that consequential to the story at hand. On that note, the story itself is something that could put off some people watching it, and that's largely because there isn't really a main story taking place. It features characters just living their lives and slowly being influenced by Chihiro's charm, so the lack of a central narrative and the multiple subplots going on can be disappointing and also confusing, as it was for me a couple times. Personally though, I didn't mind that the movie presented itself like this. It feels like a slice of life type of story where everyone deals with their own unique hardships and they gradually become more confident in doing so together. So on top of having a more realistic down-to-earth quality because of this, I just had a blast seeing everyone's stories and how they all intermingled with each other. The movie takes time with its pacing, as it should considering how leisurely it's structured in terms of story. There's no major stakes at play in the story, and nothing overly serious about it. It's about as normal and grounded as it can possibly be, and this ends up being one of the movie's biggest strengths. It's through its ordinary presentation that the audience is better able to see just how disconnected many of the characters are from each other. Even with a town as small as the one they live in, there's no true sense of community or togetherness within it, as everyone is chained to societal expectations and conventions, which makes it that much more riveting when Chihiro starts uprooting everything. However, characters still remain as good-natured as they can be in spite of their circumstances, and that's another thing I appreciate about this movie. While drama does occur throughout it, a lot of it is offset by lighthearted antics and banter between Chihiro and everyone else. The movie knows when to be serious and when to take a break, so it does a great job at balancing whatever tone a scene is meant to convey. The relaxed nature of the movie gives more time for the audience to meditate on its themes, and a lot of this is helped by the film's aesthetics. It features many shots in its cinematography, some of them long takes, where characters don't do much other than talk or stand in silence. The way these shots are framed allows the scene to marinate with its themes while enabling the audience to enjoy the atmosphere of the moment. Speaking of atmosphere, the soundtrack is amazing at how it adds to this. It's quiet and pensive in nature, and feels appropriate for how it emphasizes a small town vibe where Chihiro lives. There's just something about how meditative it sounds that it feels right. Watching this movie felt like a true character study with how Chihiro goes about inspiring other people's lives while trying to make sense of her own. She's a lost soul helping other lost souls, and while it is heartwarming to see her do this, I couldn't help but feel sad from the sense of regret she displays over how certain things in her life turned out. Without spoiling anything, the way this point is cemented in the ending is nothing short of poetry. The characters reach their own appropriate conclusions for better or worse, while Chihiro has hers in a sort of grey area, and I loved how the movie wraps up her arc. If there was a key message to learn from this movie, it's that life is never linear and rarely takes us to the place we want, at least right away. Some people do eventually reach their destination, but others spend their whole lives figuring out how to get there or even where they want to go. But even if one does fall into the latter, that doesn't mean that their life has to be all doom and gloom. This movie reminds us that it's so important to enjoy each other's company and all the little things that life has to offer. This movie is full of these little things, and while some may not like the way the movie is designed in that sense, to me that's what makes it so incredible. All of these little things add up to make one truly heartfelt and meaningful story about friendship and acceptance, and one I think the world could use a lot more of. Overall, Call Me Chihiro is a fantastic drama that explores various social themes in a lighthearted manner and is the first great Netflix film of the year. If you like dramas that are lighter in tone while still addressing social themes in meaningful ways, you absolutely have to check this out. It is so good. Its deep character development, meditative exploration of social themes, and pleasant tone make it one of the best and most thought-provoking cinematic experiences of the year so far. No matter what one's name is, we're all human, and at the end of the day, even if our lives aren't going the way we want, we all deserve to be happy and strive for happiness, and the way the movie achieves this message is nothing short of a triumph. What did you think about this movie? Did you love it as much as I did, or were there some things about it that you took issue with? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of Call Me Chihiro. Thanks for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the American horror comedy We Have a Ghost. Bye bye!